I'd now like to introduce Rebecca Fox. Rebecca Fox is the president and the CEO of the Northwest Kidney Centers, and she'll be introducing the winner and lecturer for the 2021 Bill Peckham Lecture. Hello, I'm Rebecca Fox, President and CEO of Northwest Kidney Centers, and it is my honor to introduce the 2021 Bill Peckham Lecture. As many of you know, we lost Bill in January 2019, fittingly on Dr. Scribner's birthday. Bill lived for 28 years on dialysis, traveling to dozens of countries across five continents never letting kidney disease control his life. I joined Northwest Kidney Centers just over a year ago. I didn't have a chance to meet Bill, but his legacy looms large throughout our organization. He served as the chair of our board of trustees, and a conference room at our home dialysis training center was named in Bill's honor after he marked 25 years on dialysis. Bill was a tireless advocate committed volunteer, an eternal optimist. At our 2016 Hope Builders Breakfast, Bill thanked Northwest Kidney Centers for helping him through some of his darkest hours. That morning, he told the audience all about an incredible river rafting trip he took through the Grand Canyon, during which he dialyzed on the raft, of course. He shared this reflection of the trip, a kernel of wisdom that bears revisiting. Sometimes the water is so smooth and peaceful, it's almost boring. It's repetitive, but if you pay attention, every moment is beautiful. Every part of it is amazing. Bill's spirit and passion are an inspiration, not just to our Northwest Kidney Center's family, but the entire community that is impacted by kidney disease. Bill helped lead the initial fundraising effort to establish the Kidney Research Institute, driven by his conviction that research and innovation were essential to improve the lives of people with kidney disease. Today, we honor his legacy with this annual ideas lecture as a recognition of his commitment. I am pleased to introduce the 2021 Bill Peckham lecturer, Richard Knight. Richard is the president of the American Association of Kidney Patients, the oldest and largest independent kidney patient organization in the country. He is a hemodialysis patient and received a kidney transplant over a decade ago, experiences that have animated his advocacy and public policy work. Like Bill, Richard is passionate about the importance of innovation and research to improve the lives of kidney patients. He has also written on the need to be more inclusive of minority communities in kidney disease clinical trials, disease prevention, and treatment education programs. He is a critical voice in our community, and today he will share his perspective on living well with kidney disease. Please join me in welcoming Richard Knight. Hello everyone, my name is Richard Knight and I am certainly honored and excited to be providing this Bill Peckham lecture. I wanna thank the leadership of Ideas 2021 for allowing me to, to really engage in this discussion and I'm gonna call it a conversation with you. Um, I remember Bill, I did not have the pleasure of personally meeting him, but I am certainly, or I have certainly been impacted by the attitude that he had where he was not under the circumstances, he was on top of the circumstances. And for anyone to do the things that he did, and I remember very distinctly a picture of him on his boat with his equipment ready to take off, he had my, utmost honor and respect at that time because again further proof that he did not let this disease control his life he controlled his life and handled the disease and did it well i also was 
really moved when I watched Lori Hartman speak last year, because again, Lori is one of my heroes, great respect for her and the life that she has lived and some of the challenges that she has faced. I think that it's important that we have a positive mental attitude. This disease and the lifestyle that it may prevent us from having can sometimes make us depressed, make us angry, take away the joy in life. And I think one of the ways to overcome that is by having a positive mental attitude about everything that you do and quite frankly, your very, your very exist, existence. Let's start 1983. I was in the hospital. I had an operation for a uh, problem I had with my foot and the operation went well. Unfortunately, while in the hospital, I got an infection. I left and as that infection developed, I went to see my doctor and he immediately ordered me back to the hospital where I stayed for 32 days. He said the infection I had was a very strong one and there's a very good chance that I would lose my foot. But one thing's for certain is that I would never walk again, never run, and possibly not even be able to, to ride a bike. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that certainly um, this past Saturday, I did 10,000 steps, which is about five miles. That was, as I was told many years later, the first blow to my kidneys when I was 30 years old in 1983. Fast forward to 1986, I applied for life insurance. I had a policy that lapsed. I wanted to reapply. And in reapplying, I was rejected. I went to the doctor my primary care physician, and he indicated to me that the insurance company rejected me because I had protein in my urine. And I said, Ann, can you give me a pill? No, we can't exactly do that. But one thing I wanna emphasize here, there was never any mention of a possible issue with my kidneys. And I think most of us here recognize that protein in your urine is a clear indication of impending kidney failure, which I later read after I was in dialysis. For several years, he was treating my high blood pressure. Fast forward 2004, as the high blood pressure continued to be very high, and one thing about high blood pressure, as they call it, the silent killer, I was able to function, but little did I know that my kidneys were deteriorating all throughout that time. Finally, my brother suggested that I visit a urologist to make certain that there was nothing wrong with my prostate and rule that out, which I did. And that doctor told me that, um, Mr. Knight, your prostate is fine. Mr. Knight, I hate to tell you this, but your kidneys aren't working. You need to stop what you're doing right now. I've alerted your primary care physician. You need to go to the emergency room right now. And naturally, um, I didn't listen. I continued to work because I was at my job. I was running a business and I felt fine. So a little bit later in the evening, early evening, I finished up what I was doing and went over, figured I'd be there for a half hour or so. But no, as it turned out, my kidneys were not functioning. Many other patients, I know 30 plus, 32% plus patients crash into dialysis as I did and hence, one of the mantras that I've always had is that early identification of this disease is critical, early identification, and we must educate the patient. But at the time, I was not aware of any of this. I finally got in touch with a nephrologist who was assigned to me um, when I was at the hospital. He simply sat down and explained it to me, he asked me if I knew what dialysis was. And I said, sure, I know what dialysis is. He said, well, you're going to have to undergo it, so we need to talk about that. I said, okay, while we're getting prepared for that, can you give me a pill or something so I can leave here? I've got a lot of work to do, Mr. Knight. You're not going anywhere for a while, and that's part of what we have to talk about. Now, as I was going through this, of course, many of you have experienced this. You're crushed, you're shocked, you're angry, and all of that. 
But my biggest concern was my family and how they were going to handle this. Well, ultimately, I got transferred over to a facility and I settled in as best that I could. And my social worker would come by and she met me, took me through the process, helped me get oriented and um, asked me to make certain that I settle in. And I looked at her and said, I've thought about this and I simply won't be able to settle in. I'll be a compliant patient. I'll do what is asked of me, but I will never accept sitting here in a chair being dialysized until I explore every single possibility. And that's part of what I mean about having a positive mental attitude. I wasn't mad at her, but I knew for myself that I had a tremendous trip ahead of me because I had to set out and explore whatever it is I needed to do so that I could get back to as normal a life as possible. At the time, I was president of a boys and girls club and one of my members came to see me and who was a nurse. And she said, so Richard, I'll get tested. I said, tested for what? She said, silly, you can get a transplant and you'll be almost as good as new. I said, oh, okay. So we started down that route, start looking at that. And I'm a data guy, I'm a analytical person. And when I looked at the numbers, um, it wasn't very promising. When I looked at how long it took to get a transplant, when I looked at the fact that African-Americans needed kidneys the most, but donated them the least, when I looked at the numbers that showed me that we had some of the highest percentages of folks on dialysis in the country, those are very intimidating facts. And as I've said, I had to come up with a plan. And fortunately, I met someone at the dialysis facility, Bernie Holmes, who was on dialysis for 31 years, an amazing gentleman. And he mentored me and he's helped me understand not so much about dialysis, but about myself and how I should deal with it and understand what was gonna be an approach for me that would allow me not only to survive, but thrive. And he always had positive words. And based on my analysis of the situation, I determined that I need to get someone to donate me a kidney because I may be waiting seven or eight years in this DC metropolitan area. And ultimately I did come across someone. And, and what I decided to do was to educate people. While I was on dialysis, I continued to work eight to nine hours a day. Um, I was on several boards and my doctor told me, Mr. Knight, you don't have any restrictions. The only thing stopping you is you deciding not to do anything. As long as you go through your sessions, follow the rules that we've talked about, take your medication. I'm not putting any restrictions on you. And so I took full advantage of that. And I know that may sound a little bit different, but like I said, I was never told things that I couldn't do. And I always appreciated when people tell me what I could do. So I was determined to live the best life that I could. I wanna go back to the point of <clears throat> the positive mental attitude. I had great motivation. I had two kids, Kamal and Kamala, my son was 14 when I went on dialysis and my daughter was six. And I actually coached my son's soccer team. And although I didn't coach my daughter, she was involved in gymnastics. That was my why. I wanted to always want to spend time. I was a little bit older when I had kids. And one of the pleasures in life that I had was spending time with my kids. That was my why. That is what motivated me to do whatever I could do so that I could get back out there and provide them as normal a life as possible and never wanted them to see me down and negative. Yes, I understood that I was sick. Yes, I understood that I had limitations, but I also understood that I could have a decent quality of life and I had to do the best that I could do to make certain that that happened. So again, as I educated people and talked with them, 
I had a member who was on the board of the Chamber of Commerce with me. Um, and she told me one day, she says, Rich, I understand you need a kidney. I said, that's right. She said, I'll donate a kidney to you. And as I understood it, when she went to get tested, we were almost a perfect match. I was amazed that she would do this, such a selfless thing. And I'll never forget how my kids went in and, and thanked her. It was obviously very special to them and certainly very special to me. I think that we have to do what we can. Patients are not victims. We're in control of our fate. And it starts from having that positive mental attitude. And if you see me and I'm not smiling, I want you to let me know because I always like to bring something positive to the table. After I left dialysis, I told you that I had applied for a board for American Association of Kidney Patients and I was accepted. Thus, my journey began with AAKP. And certainly the um, role of AAKP is to educate and advocate on behalf of patients and to help improve the whole concept of patient engagement, which I thoroughly enjoyed and embraced. I love this conference, the people, the activity, the leadership, and we're always going to, to encourage patients to do the best that they can for themselves. Sometimes that involves having uncomfortable conversation with those who are purveyors of the status quo. Business models need to change. Attitudes need to change. Information silos need to be broken down. And as patients, we have to lead innovation through AAKP. Um, I'm honored to serve as, as president. Um, I think that the organization does have a, a tremendous history, but it is our future that I'm real excited about. We have a tremendous staff, good group of patients coming up as ambassadors who are just super engaged. And many of you participate as ambassadors for which I thank you. And we will continue to play a role. And again, even after my time is done, I will still be available. I will still be out here advocating on behalf of patients and certainly encouraging you to be the best you that you can be. And negative energies are draining. So that positive mental attitude can take you a long ways, probably further than what you'll ever realize, despite all the challenges that I face, and certainly many of you face many more challenges, we have the opportunity to have a great quality of life. There's so many positive things going on now in the arena. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the opportunity to share with you a little bit today. And I look forward to seeing and engaging with you as soon as we are back to having face-to-face -face interactions. Take care, everyone.